Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Green Dome. I'm Tom Hammond, joined by Carol Lewis and Marty LaCory as we start this afternoon's competition with a first semifinal in the men's 60-meter dash. And there's U.S. champion Tim Harden. Unfortunately, after that championship, Maurice Green said that he had a twitch in one of his legs, so it tainted Harden's victory. Here, he wants to prove it was no fluke. And from the former University of Kentucky All-American to a TCU All-American, Donovan Powell of Jamaica. Yes, Donovan Powell, one of a number of great Jamaican sprinters to come out of TCU. In 95, he was second at the NCAA's Doors. Here are the lane assignments as you look at Deji Aliu of Nigeria. He's in lane three, Harden in four, Powell in lane five. The top two finishers plus the next two fastest runners advance to the 60-meter final. Everyone's thinking about getting out with a gun and not false starting, especially Aliu, who was thrown out for two false starts at the last World Championships. Aliu there on the right of your screen, Tim Harden on the left. Well, one thing at the national championships, Tim Harden had a fantastic start. He was out and gone be practically before anyone got up in the set position. He ran a great race. He says consistency has become very important to him now. Yo. And Harden away quickly in lane four. Ali is there and Donovan Powell. Harden in front with Powell as they come to the line. Tim Harden wins, Powell is second, and Aliu finished third. Well, Aliu certainly wasn't shy about going after the gun. You got to give him credit. But Tim Harden, who wasn't out first, was at the finish. Nice, smooth race, made his transition out of the blocks kind of abruptly. He can't do that in the final. You're right, Marty. And right here, Tim Harden has come up very well. He is leading the race. And take a look at this. Right now, he's figured out that there's nobody's going to catch him. He is actually shutting down and coasting across the finish line as the other athletes realize there's only one more positive spot to make it to the final. He sure made it look easy. He ran for 40 yards. Then he totally changed his stride, stopped using his arms, really cut back. Bad habit to get into. So Tim Harden, the U.S. national champion, wins his semifinal. Powell and Aliu also advance to the 60-meter final. And while Tim Harden awaits that final, let's head down to the Green Dome floor where the fourth member of our announcing crew, Dwight Stones, is standing by. Dwight? Thanks, Tom. As always, I'll be down here trackside covering the field events. But perhaps the most intriguing story of these championships is the reemergence of double sprint gold medalist Gail Devers. We haven't seen much of her since 1996 due to a recurring Achilles tendon problem. But she's back with a vengeance in 1999 to prove that she could possibly be the first ever sprinter to win three consecutive gold medals. She's here in Maibashi to prove she's back. All right, Dwight, we're looking forward to seeing Gail a little later, but first, the next men's semifinal featuring Maurice Green, the 1997 World Outdoor Champion at 100 meters and the 60-meter world record holder. Maurice said that this year he's thinking about winning. Last year he was chasing records. Didn't work out for him, especially at the U.S. Championships, so he's got a different attitude this year. There's Bruni Surin of Canada, twice World Indoor Champion. I talked to Bruni Surin while he was down in Houston a couple years ago, and he said the biggest advantage for the Americans is that the best sprinters train together. Here are the lane assignments as you look at 33-year-old Raymond Stewart of Jamaica. He's in lane three, Surin in five, Green in lane six. Raymond Stewart. And Maurice Green has already had the several starts today in his first round of heat. There were five false starts, one of them by Maurice. He told me after that race he thought that the blocks were too touchy, that they needed to be recalculated. You see these starting blocks at the international level have a wire, as you see, from the back of the blocks. And if somebody leaves early, then the starter will be able to hear a sound in his ear. He will shoot the gun again, and that means everyone has to restart. They've had these blocks for a while, but every once in a while, there is a little problem. Fair start here. Jason Livingston in lane two of Great Britain away quickly. But here comes Maurice Green. Maurice Green takes control and wins in championship record time, 6-4-6. Six, six. Watch at the start and throughout the race. Watch his head. This is John Smith, his coach's legacy. His runners keep their heads down and don't look up. Don't try and run upright. That's how they've changed the sprint. 
I think Maurice only looked up when he wanted to see how close the wall was that they were approaching. See how he keeps his head down. Everyone else by this time is looking at the finish line. He's still looking down. Now he looks up just to see how much time he's got to shut it all down. You're exactly right, Marty. And also, it's called patience. In the 60 meters, even though it is only 60 meters long, you have to get through your dry phase and get to an upright position, which Maurice Green is right now. And right when he's in running position, he's already in the lead. So Maurice Green runs away with a championship record, winning his semifinal officially 6.45. Jason Livingston second, and Surin, the relay gold medalist in Atlanta, also moves on to the final. Maurice Green impressive in his semifinal heat. And let's take a look at the finalist for the men's 60 meters. Maurice Green, the fastest qualifier. Tim Harden looking for another upset after a beating Maurice Green in Atlanta. Japan, famous for its fine silk and traditional weaving. And inside the Green Dome in Maibashi, it's time now for the men's 60-meter final and world record holder Maurice Green. Green, the 1997 World Outdoor Champion at 100 meters, has emerged as the sprinter to catch. But he was upset last month at the U.S. National Championship by childhood friend and rival Tim Harden. And this is a fair start. Green got away maybe a step slowly. John Drummond, and here comes Harden. Once again, Tim Harden that caused the upset. Me and Tim, we ran on the same summer track club team together. Um, and that's, that's, that's the last time he beat me. Oh, please. <laughs> it, he forgets when he came to Kentucky and raced me there indoors. So, you know, it, it, it's a lot of competition, but it's also a lot of fun. I think I got him, oh, uh, I know I got him at Kentucky. I, got him, I probably got him a couple of times, but he had beat me a lot. When it, when it counts in the bigger races. So, you know, now it's trying to, trying to make a, a little swing of things. The confident Green had been dominating the indoor circuit this season until that loss to Harden. Well, Maurice Green admitted that he was not in top form in the final at the national championships, but he's here now, and he said he's ready to roll. In lane one is Deji Aliu of Nigeria. Deji Youngster's running very well right now. In lane two. Lane two is Matt Shervington of Australia. The Australian record holder at 100 meters is training a lot outdoors and is ready to go inside now. Green is in lane three. Well, Green and his coach, John Smith, got here early. They have been working out all week. He's definitely concentrated on this race. Lane four, Donovan Powell of Jamaica. Donovan Powell finished second in his semifinals with a personal best of 650. Britain's Jason Gardner in lane five. And in lane six, Tim Harden. Tim Harden had a great start in his semifinal. He's going to need another good one if he expects to win this race. Lane seven, Jason Livingston of Great Britain. And in lane eight will be Canada's Bruni Surin. Surin, the 93 and the 95 indoor world champion. Also a member of that 1996 4x100 relay team that won gold for Canada. I think all of these men are worried about getting out of the blocks very quickly. It's only a 60-meter race. You've got to get out of the blocks. This gentleman, Maurice Green, in his heat, had five false starts, and one of them was committed by him. Most of the meets don't have the electronic block, so you get in the habit of trying to anticipate the starter. Then you get to a meet like this where you have to react to the gun or you'll get caught. This is a fair start, and Tim Harden is away quickly. Here comes Maurice Green, coming to the line. Harden and Green at the finish, very tight. Maybe Maurice Green. Championship time as Green and Harden hit the line together on the replay. Let's see if we can separate them. Green and Harden, Harden closest to you. Green on the inside as they come to the line. Maurice Green just nipping Tim Harden. He's with Dwight. All right, thanks, Tom. Maurice Green, twice the world champion now, once outdoors, once indoors, but the road to this indoor one was very, very difficult. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, I had some very tough competitors, and I knew Tim Harden was going to be one I have to look out for in the final. You were all business as I watched you prepare for the semifinal and the final. None too pleased about all of the starts you needed to take over the last week. Six races in a week. Talk about that a little bit. Well, 
Um, a lot of false starts, but I just can't let it get to me. I have to stay under control and concentrate and do the things that I have to do and just let the best race come out that I can. 6.42 at the end of six races in a week. What does that tell us about what you're prepared to do outdoors? <laughs> we have to wait and see. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you. A 1-2 U.S. sweep as Maurice Green bests his American teammate, Tim Harden.